Well, hi to everybody. First of all, excuse my poor English, but I, I'll try to do my best. And uh, second of all, excuse that this is not so appropriate, but my iPad is not working properly, so that's all what I can do. Uh, I don't want to make a big speech about general issues in Spain, because I think that it can also be interesting that some of us make some bits on interesting points around what we're talking about. So I, I want to talk about freedom of speech in my country and what I consider one of the biggest problems for it, uh, Norway is. Uh, well, we have some general problems. I want to talk about uh, the media, the media in Spain, uh, that is some complicated. Uh, we have only two big uh, television groups. They have different channels. And, but there are only two big companies. This is kind of a complicated issue because you can't have a television in Spain just if you want it. You do need a, a permission by the government or by the regional government. And that's, so uh, you can't have a television by your own. It's very complicated to fight with so that big companies if you finally get the license to that. Uh, that allowed you to to have a TV, and uh, that makes that uh, or we have only few choose, only few things to choose in, on our TV when when we're talking about political information, and uh, what a pity most of them are quite left winded. So uh, the the TV in Spain is usually left winded oriented. We also have a lot of uh, state owned. Uh, televisions, local televisions, regional televisions, also the big national television, and radios. And on radios we have uh, a different, uh, it's not two, just two big groups, but we have also a lot of um, political, uh, uh, excuse me, a lot of public stations, like in TV. So we have a very distorted market. It's not really easy for a private company to reach out, to make money, and to and to have uh, their own opinion and to make that opinions uh, arrive to the public. We also have in this, in this public uh, media, we have a problem with uh, how they work. The union, labor unions have very, very strong power on it. So uh, sometimes uh, what is on TV or what can be on TV is determined by some workers, what some workers think about what should to be a public TV. There was a case uh, just a year ago uh, when a liberal uh, colleague uh, was about to be in a very important program on, on the public TV in Spain, and then the workers make a statement. They, want, they don't want that guy in the TV because it's a guy that, as me, it's, uh, opposes that uh, the state has TV stations. So they made an, a big statement, they made some protests, and this particular guy uh, finally is not on TV now, is not on that public TV now. So that's uh, a kind, uh, an example, a very good example of what they understand by political correctness and what, and the way they made that only some things, only some kind of opinions appear on TVs. Well, we also have a problem with uh, the weakness of all communications companies. Uh, we, are, we spent many years on crisis, on the newspapers and polit on communication companies. We joined a couple of different crises, but at the same time, we, we find that there is a big crisis on just all communication business, I think, in all the world with the arriving on it, of, on it, of internet and how it's changing periodism, periodism and how it's changing the business. And we have also our own crisis in Spain that as you, I suppose you know, it has been quite hard. So uh, communication companies, uh, newspapers and radios and everything uh, are very weak now. We, it's very difficult to make money. We, well, most of, of the market is losing money. So that makes companies weak and that makes companies uh, you know, they need to negotiate with government and they need to be not always opposite to government. It's, it's just a difficult relationship. 
and it makes that uh, probably is not the best relationship, the, is not the best moment for freedom of speech. So then we have internet, uh, which is almost the land of the free, or, or perhaps it's not. Why? Because it's easy and it's cheap to create a, a new media on, on internet. It's much more easy and much more cheap that make it on, and digital newspaper, the, uh, a paper newspaper. So in Spain we have a lot of new newspapers, and not each digital newspapers, but quite different points of view, which is okay. And we have also uh, social networks, Twitter, Facebook, which are a way to everybody express what they think and express their own opinions. But this is social networks, and that's the main point of what I want to talk about are uh, the territory of political correctness. I want to talk about this because also this is what I suffer every day. You know, I, I ob obviously, I have freedom of, of speech in Spain, but I have to go through some problems. So let's talk about, about this. There's a really a big pressure on this media, especially I talk uh, about social networks, but the social network, I think it's more interesting for journalists, at least in Spain, I don't know in other countries, and the social network who is really a trendsetter is Twitter. So I, most of this is about what happens on Twitter. Uh, it's not easy to say what you really want to say. Why? Uh, when you step out of the political correctness path, usually there happens some things. Uh, apparently, it's a spontaneous movement, so it's not something organized. But we all know that there are some people and some parties who are organizing some kind of movements. So in part it's spontaneous, but it's not always spontaneous. There are some opinion leaders, uh, people uh, which have a very strong, uh, they're very strong on, on Twitter, they have a lot of followers, and they are not directly linked with, uh, with parties. They are not part of a party, but are really, really, really in a good relationship with Podemos. Eva was talking about Podemos, about Podemos before, and they, it's a new party, it's a extreme left-oriented party, and they have a really good understanding on how communication in this era is working, and how communication to Twitter and Facebook and this kind of uh, things is working. So these people, which are very powerful in the Twitter scene in Spain, are not a part of Podemos, they are not politicians, but are very strong linked with the party and they share almost every opinion. Uh, some of them are journalists. Some of them are people as us that have a, a very strong impact. Some of them are just kind of showmen or showwomen. It's, you know, it's difficult to say what, what they are. They work on the media, but it's difficult to say they're the journalists. And this is a, a, a quite new thing. That some of them are anonymous. Some of them are people that doesn't put their phrase and their names when they're talking. So this is, uh, I think this is quite unfair because when you're f fighting, obviously uh, discussing, the electing with, with some of them, you're in, in a big disadvantage. You are putting your face, you're putting your name, and these people is just beside some strange uh, picture and they are not uh, appearing. So that, I think that makes from, from them quite easy to fight, especially if they are in a not fair fight. No? <clears throat> the, the thing is starts, let's imagine you say something that it's not on the, on the political correctness admitted sphere. So they start to fight you. And before they fight you, there come hundreds, and I really mean hundreds of people, fighting you. They usually use humor, which is algo, it's something I think difficult to, because I use humor on Twitter, I use sarcasm, but I, I don't usually, well, I try not to fight against the person. I try to fa fight against the idea, but they are always fighting about the person, and are fighting against the person, excuse me, and they are fighting, not the idea, but the, the person, and they are trying to fight you as an opinion maker, as a journalist, just as a person. 
I like a sarcasm. I say I think it's very useful in 140 characters. It's a very useful uh, weapon, we can say. And, but it's it's dangerous. And the problem is that it's not that kind of sarcasm. But after that sarcasm, where that hundreds of people come to fight you to, the scala is increased. So they start with humor, they start with sarcasm, but in one point there's something that directly insults you. And in another point there will be probably something that makes some kind of menace. So uh, it's usually not seen, nothing to, to keep seriously. I don't feel frightened by that, but it's really unpleasant. If something says that uh, you will be probably better death or if you will be in, out of your country. Well, I, I'm not feel f frightened about that, but it's really unpleasant. And it's, as I say, something that seems spontaneous, that I'm sure that is in part spontaneous, but I'm sure also that is in part not that spontaneous. It's something that really grows in a very determined way. And as I say, I think it's something in some kind or in one, at least one part, orchestrated by somebody. The idea, as I say, is not to refute ideas, but refute people. And that is very important. I, they never fight about, they, they never go to the point that you're discussing. They say that you say that you're stupid, they say that you're ridiculous. And that kind of way of fighting it, might make, make him feel you ridiculous, make him feel you like some kind of uh, strange person, deviate person is very harmful for the debate. And that is the way that they use to some ideas uh, take out of the public debate. The problem is that there are some things, some, things, some points of view that is just, oh, you're crazy. Let's not discuss about that because you're just crazy. The consequences of that are not only that, as I said before, it's really unpleasant to have this kind of things facts every day, is that uh, even though Twitter is not a mirror of Spanish society, we always, uh, people we spend, I spent a lot of time of tw on Twitter, uh, I think that we are a bit mad about it and, well, Spain or any society is not what we see in Twitter, it's just uh, a very specific point in which uh, we, we meet with uh, some people but most of us are journalists, people really interested in politics, and the common people is not like that. So they're on their own lives, they want just to work and go home and stay with their families. Well, so Twitter is not a mirror of the society, but a lot of really in, one minute, okay. A lot of really influential people is on Twitter. And the, we all get drowned on that hard environment. So it's very difficult to, to take your head off that. And it's very difficult to really analyze things uh, with a normal point of view. And the other point that is important is that Twitter is really very influential on what is on newspapers, what is on TV, what is on radio station. So a lot of newspapers, a lot of journalists are on that and are making news not with Twitter, but about Twitter and what happens on Twitter. So that really has a very hard impact on what is on the normal media. Through, is a, I say, it's just a part of, a small part of the public opinion on Twitter. And it's also a strong uh, trendsetter. You know, usually uh, it's uh, in media and, and in TVs, we're talking about things that happen on Twitter and are, we talk about what is happening on Twitter, what is being talked about on Twitter. So it's that environment, that hard environment for uh, not political correct ideas, finally has a very, a very strong impact on what we see on media and what we see on television. And that's what I want to share with you. Thank you very much.